Greetings, survivors and friends, Shadow Fraxy, once again with another Concept Limbo! Episode 23, to be precise. As you might know, lately I've been turning my attention to ideas from the wonderful Rust community, and in the previous episode I explored such diverse concepts as nuclear energy, travelling merchants, and code lock crackers. But in this one, I've decided to focus on an area of Rust that is still as yet relatively untouched. You see, once upon a time, on a legacy map far, far away, merely poking a toe in the ocean would land you on a one-way cruise to Respawn City, so we've come a long way. But even though we now have diving gear, underwater plants, and sunken wrecks, just like the actual oceans of our planet, about 80% of Rust's blue wobbly stuff remains unexplored by humans, partly because the loot there isn't exactly enough to get Jacques Cousteau to crack out the snorkel. Besides, he's dead. Anyway, Rust's nautical environment still needs something, or some things, more to make it a bit less of a dive. So in this episode, I'm going to investigate what the community thinks would make it better down where it's wetter. Talking of which, a quick advert from today's sponsor, do you fancy jumping into one of over 1200 historically accurate vehicles from all over the 20th century and going head to head in humongous online multiplayer skirmishes, land, sea, air, horses? Okay, not horses, but they are always adding new stuff, so maybe if I ask them really nicely. Whatever the case, War Thunder might be right up your alley. You want an accurate simulation experience with all the knobs and whistles? No problem, they've got that. A realistic mode for challenging historical tactical encounters, you say? Sure, why not? Or perhaps you've just gone in from a tough day at the office and need to release a bit of steam with some quick and dirty arcade action. Well, they've got you covered there too. With more than 20 million players around the world on PC, PS4 and Xbox, with crossplay between PC and consoles, and regular new content every couple of months, there's never an excuse for a dull moment, but the best thing is, it's free to play. And if you register using my link in the description, you'll not only be helping out an old horse, but you'll get a free premium tank or aircraft and a three-day account boost. But seriously, click on the link because I need the money to buy pies. Back to the video. So, first of all, as the mainland becomes increasingly crowded with remnants from the rusty past, free real estate is getting more valuable and in shorter supply. Therefore, logic dictates our next big rad town should be a wet one. Now, I have mentioned some official concepts for more worthwhile underwater monuments in previous limbos, and as well as various small landmarks such as pieces of ship and sunken swimming pools that look like a nightmare to clean, the most notable was this artwork for a giant crashed submarine in January 2016. Although, sadly, the hunt for Rust October is still ongoing, this hasn't dissuaded the community because as well as a ship ton of ideas for underwater monuments on both Reddit and the suggestion box section of the Rust website, the custom map community has been trying to create its own takes on what could be down there. In October of last year, map maker Meza started work on a small sunken sub monument, and although it eventually ended up being used on land instead, he says he might still make a proper underwater version someday. I'm impressed because despite reusing a variety of other prefabs to create it, I think he's managed to capture the claustrophobic feel of the real thing. More recently, another map maker, TC Tilts, sent me some work in progress shots of a sunken cargo ship that he's building, made by basically slamming two of the things together to create a snapped in half Titanic style monument. Whilst a sunken, maybe even nuclear, submarine is by far the most popular suggestion, and a no brainer if you ask me, especially given Rust's backstory, watch my vids on this for more details, other ideas I've seen include military grade shipwrecks, underwater tunnel systems, secret labs, and caves. There seems to be general agreement though that whatever form it takes, it should be deep down, have some small amount of radiation, and a breathable interior. Maybe even puzzles. But the main thing that people agree on is that the loot should be far juicier, and thus worth the trip. Perhaps such types of rad town wouldn't even be marked on the map, or have any indication on the surface about where they are, requiring a proper search to find, although there are always meta ways of finding these things out. But, you say, a source of high-tier loot, hidden in the depths away from the prying eyes of randomly roaming players? Such a thing would be game-breaking if there wasn't an appropriate level of risk involved, in addition to onboard scientists and radiation, of course. Which brings me to this young chap here. Illustrated by Artist Excited, because, let's face it, the sea is completely devoid of life right now, apart from the magic fish that appear in our traps, but as well as frenzies of sharks being a potent threat in deeper waters where the best loot could be kept, they'd also be the perfect excuse for us to finally get those harpoon guns. 
which I have of course discussed at length. Sharks have also been known to eat just about anything, with some weird stuff having been found in them over the years, such as license plates, chicken coops, porcupines, and even a suit of armour. I'm not joking about that. So one idea would be for them to not only eat unfortunate players, but to gulp down their best loot as well, only giving it back when killed and harvested. Which could of course make them lucky dip loot containers of the highest order. Maybe hammerheads could give you building supplies. Mm. High risk, high reward, far out underwater rad towns, surrounded by sharks with freaking lasers maybe even, are all well and good, but if that's where we're going. Maybe we're going to need more than fins. Well, just like the various methods of surface and air travel we already have, different tiers of transport could be made available for us to use in the depths as well. Here, for instance, is a concept sent to me directly by one community member, Mr. Groovy. It's a crafted sea scooter, basically a modified chainsaw that swaps a propeller for the blade and cuts through water instead of wood. Possibly a bit slower than the rowboat, it would run on good old low grade and be purchased from the outpost. But but although it would be fairly cheap to buy and run, requiring both hands to operate means you wouldn't be able to fight and flight. However, that could be solved with Tier 2, a two-man sub masterfully sketched here by friend not foe over on my Discord, with barrels for the body, a bucket at the nose, and the rest made out of road signs. This was his take on the Chariot, a two-man human torpedo made by the British during World War II but despite looking like a type of kamikaze device, that wasn't the intended mode of attack. Although this is rust, so… Okay, so more underwater monuments, better loot, sea life and modes of transport, all of these would be a better use of rust's huge salty space, and I'm talking about the water not the land, but this is concept limbo. So let's address the humpback in the room and talk about underwater bases, which have been suggested many times. The ability to build a legitimate underwater base would be both the most effective way of avoiding other people and make you feel like an evil genius in the process, but obviously it would have to be balanced and full of trade-offs. Enormous underwater compounds allowing clans to camp the oil rigs would be fun for them, and very few others. Looking through how others have approached this issue, certain themes turn up again and again. Higher decay is one, and as we're underwater, some kind of pump to get and keep the fluids out. Plus an airlock, an actual airlock would be needed, perhaps with special doors. Lose that you're in deep water. Another solution possibly would be pre-existing structures such as small wrecks that we could build inside, or caves with air pockets, limited building space and only one way in and out, although these could still be abused and used as places to stash ill-gotten gains. Door camping them might be tough as well. I'd be interested to know though whether you think this sort of thing could be balanced, and if so, how? So let me know in the comments below. But okay, let's assume that Rust Subnautica, Rust Nautica would be too much fun for too few people. There is a compromise. Floating bases. It took me literally minutes to put this together in the map editor, just to show the sort of thing I mean, because you're worth it. The basic new building component needed would be a floating foundation, however, it would stay in position wherever you placed it. After that, bases could be built up as normal. But perhaps due to buoyancy limitations, only wood or sheet metal constructions would be allowed. I'm not sure. One useful feature could be for foundations to act as floor frames and allow players to enter and exit underneath. For this, you could either use a ladder hatch or perhaps finally give us that trapdoor we all crave, as can be seen in this model by Hawkeye on my Discord. I think this is one trap I'd fall for again and again though. And don't forget, this sort of thing could give you the perfect safe space for fishing when that rod and bobber are finally implemented, because staying still for any length of time standing up in Rust is a sure way to end up staying very still lying down. Talking of which brings me to my final concept this time round, because the best way to protect your newly built floating base would be with some freshly crafted floating traps. Originally drawn up by Giuseppe Ganji and modelled by Hawkeye, both of whom worked on last episode's nuclear generator, these traps would require a propane tank and a football to craft, and yes, we totally need football footballs, but that's another story for another time. And they would explode if run over by a boat, or perhaps even just if swum into. And although Giuseppe suggests being able to disarm them by shooting the football, 
I feel like they should be a bit harder than that to get rid of. But to what do you think, and indeed which, if any, of these community concepts do you feel would actually work in the game? Please go crazy with your thoughts and suggestions in the comments and I'll try to reply to as many as I can until I run out of whiskey. Did you know I stream on Twitch three times a week? If not, make sure to follow me there. I'd like to thank everyone who contributed artwork for this episode, and I'll leave links where applicable to their personal art station slash deviant art pages etc in the pinned comment. You'll also find links down there to my Twitter, Facebook, Discord and Steam group plus my Patreon page, where supporters can get access to a special part of my Discord plus other perks, such as early access to videos like this one. I shall catch you all in the next stream or vid, but until then, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. Sharks with freaking lasers, maybe even.